Hello everyone, I'm Cecilia Knapp and I am the current uh, Young People's Laureate for London and I'm here today with Shaniqua Benjamin who is the Croydon Laureate so we're going to have a little bit of a chat um, about being laureates <laughs> and um, our love of poetry and um, what we want to achieve during our time as Young People's Laureate and Croydon Laureate. Um, so yeah, Shaniqua, you were kind of sworn in, sworn in um, at the same time as me, weren't you? First of October, mm -hmm. which was National Poetry Day. Um, we were just talking a little bit before, weren't we, about how uh, it's quite a strange time because obviously everything's online and um, we were just about to go into another lockdown. Um, so have you been have you been busy since since the first of October? Have you been up to anything yet? Not as busy as I want to be. I think um, lockdown has had an effect on that and it's impacted the first project I was meant to start with the Museum of Croydon, which is very frustrating because I am so rearing to go and just get this work started and do great stuff in Croydon. Would you tell us a little bit more about the Croydon Museum project? That would be really great. So that's really exciting. It's um me working with young people, make this so it's kind of a natural elevation from the work that I do, working with young people and mostly from black, Asian, minority ethnic backgrounds, just so that they can get more voices heard because Croydon is like a hugely diverse borough, but the museum is not really reflecting that at all. So we're trying to work on that and get them responding to the collections because it kind of stopped in 2011 after the riots. So we want to get some more pieces for that. And that's going to be really exciting to work with them, get them writing, and also to learn more about the museum myself because I know hardly anything about it. I haven't seen the collections and so many people don't even know there's a museum in Croydon. So I'm looking forward to raising the profile of that as well. So is um, being Croydon Poet Laureate, is that about raising the visibility of poetry specifically within Croydon. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of building on how spoken word and poetry has built has built more in Croydon and just making it even more accessible and really kind of promoting that and getting people writing and just seeing how they can actually do it because people are really afraid of poetry still and I don't want them to be totally. And and is that what attracted you initially to being um Croydon Poet Laureate what was it about that role that you were like yeah that's that's something I want to do it's another platform to kind of amplify the voices of others which I love to do to make other voices heard to, uh, to make a difference as well and doing it through art I've always wanted to be a creative so this is a way of like marrying the two things together so I was just really excited to be able to do more in my borough and to do more with poetry and to grow as an artist as well which is really important for me yeah that's super exciting. Are you from Croydon? I am. I'm a Croydon girl, born and raised. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, so I live in Hackney. Uh, okay. But I did live in South for a long time. Um, but I, um, I betrayed South and moved East. Oh, or no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually grew up in Brighton, uh, you know, by, down by the sea on the South Coast. Um, but I've been in London for about 10 years now. Um, and London was, for me, where poetry started for me. I didn't really have any, my love of poetry didn't really begin until I came to London. Even though Brighton is like a super creative place, there wasn't, I wasn't aware of any spoken word nights or poetry nights or anything down there. I'm sure there are, but it was coming to London and, and getting into, because I got into the kind of spoken word scene um, before, well, that was sort of like my route into poetry. It felt like a really exciting um, place to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I just met in the first kind of year that I was in London, I just met all these amazing writers that were just like, it's making me miss live events talking about this, but <laughs> just going to a poetry night, everyone being there, supporting each other, reading a new poem, everyone hanging out afterwards, talking about poetry. It was such an amazing route into poetry. Um, Cause actually, funnily enough, I was just been writing this article today about like why I'm excited to work with young people uh, in the arena of poetry. And it got me thinking about how so many young people that I work with are like, oh no I don't like poetry I, I don't really care about it um it's boring it's too difficult things like that 
And so I was like reading up online about what's on the GCSE syllabus at the moment, which is actually not even compulsory to do poetry uh, at mm -hmm. GCSE anymore, as you probably know. And I was reading the poems and I was like, oh, these are, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to cause controversy. <laughs> there are some really good poems on the syllabus, yeah. but a lot of them are so kind of like, um, rigid in like form and rhyme and like the the subjects which they're addressing are so hard to connect with so I kind of think like like you were saying earlier it's kind of no wonder you go to you you work with young people and they're like oh no I don't, I don't want to write a poem you know it's just I get that all the time even young people older people are really afraid like I do some work with um crisis and it's, I find some people don't want to do poetry because they not good of literacy or things like that and I'm saying we can just work on that and build on that poetry isn't all about literacy and it's just thinking how can you know I make this art form more accessible for everyone so they actually want to write it and see it's not so hard and you don't have to you know write this really convoluted language and have to have the hugest metaphors it's you know you can express yourself and it's mm. I hear so many people say it's a form of therapy and how therapeutic it is and kind of looking at it in that kind of easier simple way of breaking it down rather than I have to write this amazing piece straight away it's going to like I don't know change everyone's imagination or mindset or something yeah and I think once you take that pressure off yourself to write to try and replicate a famous poem by a famous old dead person once you take the pressure of grammar and spelling and yeah like you say trying to fix everything with a poem then you can actually start to have a load of fun with it can't you and there's so many young people that I chat to they're like I don't have anything to write about and I'm like I have a little conversation with them just a back and forth for 10 minutes and they've already told me so many interesting things and I go well why don't we write about that and they're like that's boring you know and I'm like your life is not boring <laughs> your life is so fascinating to me and so many other people when we need those stories out in the world because if you've only got a certain amount of poems from a certain amount of people like a tiny demographic of people then the poetry landscape is going to be a pretty boring dry place isn't it i agree i think that's a huge thing like when i say to people what i write about i say i love writing about american sports they look at me really weird like american sports i'm like well yeah and yeah. you can write poems about that and i love writing about that so mm -hmm. it's trying to encourage people to write about what is important to them what they love or things like, rather than just people think it's not fun about love or really over emotional stuff all the time and that's not always the case nah sometimes i just like hearing a poem about like eating a sandwich <laughs> um yeah and also I think like you were saying writing being good for you as well like I definitely I'm not saying that everyone should be a poet it's not a job for everybody um but I do think that having like a creative practice in your life is so important and can really help you figure out a lot of stuff and can help you find the answers to things and ask the questions to things and also yeah. find like the joy and the fun about writing as well without it being like right or wrong or just kind of having that process you know yeah I agree I agree yes I think creativity is the most beautiful thing for so many different reasons are there any other art forms that you kind of do or like or like dabble in apart from poetry well I started with poetry like I stumbled across uh, like a poetry course uh, in London when I was like 10 years ago when I was 18 and I was like whoa this is so cool um, but then that actually opened the door into other um, types of writing for me as well which is a really which is a really good point as well isn't it because it's like um, opening yourself up to poetry means opening yourself up to other things as well so I actually started writing plays after I got into poetry because I was really interested in dialogue um, and like the back and forth between people so I wrote a couple of plays and one of them was one of them was just actually a one-woman show and then the other one was two characters that are just like basically having a bit of a chat in a pub and I and I loved the restriction of only working with dialogue um, and then I also wrote a novel so obviously that's like completely polar opposite to poetry because yeah. a not if an if a if a poem is like a delicious small snack then a novel is like a banquet do you know what i mean it's like huge so it was really um 
a really different experience but really exciting and expansive being able to kind of just like really go into things because I see a poem as like a moment like zoning in on a moment whereas mm. a novel is like can be a whole lifetime you know um so yeah I guess those two other art forms I'm pretty into as well um and I like to read novels lots and I like to um and I like to watch plays when you can watch plays because you obviously yeah. Any, and it that's so it makes me so sad because there was so many exciting like new playwrights and great shows coming up before corona you know it felt fitting like before it happened i got to see passover at kiln theater which mm. was the most amazing thing i remember going away from that and being like for ages i couldn't believe it and it just my heart just did something to me and i was like everybody needs to go and see this and then I had to stop and that was just so heartbreaking because this was just the most amazing piece of theatre that just said so much and we'll get so many conversations going but this is what you make art for is this yeah. reason here you are. yeah totally and you think about all the people whose life that would have changed like you say the conversations it's going to start the empathy that people are going to have because of seeing that piece of art like that is kind of what that's why people write isn't it that yeah. to have that impact um how did you get into poetry and did you did you think you could be a poet were you like yeah i'm gonna be a poet when i'm older never i also wanted to be a writer when i was a child i wanted to be a writer at first i wanted to write novels and stories yeah. and then i changed fashion design and then it all kind of went full circle i want to be a writer again and then i found poetry where i was creating the short film to launch my youth organization and i wrote a spoken word piece and i was like i can actually write poetry because i hated it at school like school really ruined it for me and then i started watching more spoken word stuff and i was like i really love this and i did workshops and started to read more and i just fell in love with it and thought this is the form of writing for me that is what's going to help me become the writer i want to be to release books and it's such an amazing form of expression like it's so healthy for me like i always say i need writing because i struggle with self-harm so this is what I need to do to like express myself in a really healthy way and also just the amount you can say in a small period of time to just share information or inspire others or empower others I think it's just so powerful and so special so I was like yeah this is poetry I've just fell in love with it and loved it ever since really that is so inspiring and I just think that you are exactly the right sort of person to be getting people all over Croydon and engage with poetry because that is, yeah, that story is really, yeah, your love for it is so palpable and the, and the fact that it's, um, that it's such an important way to connect to yourself and to other people as well and, and for other people to think that they have they have the space that they deserve the space to tell their story and to say whatever they want about the the world really um do you want to share one of your poems i would really love to hear a poem yeah i'd love to um this poem i'm going to share means so much to me special place in my heart very special place in my heart this is called forgotten ones Unwrap the clamp around your tongue. Free their names, they ain't so hard, Giovanni. Shakai, Manaf, Rashan. Not jumbles twisting your lips into knots, a labyrinth would get you less lost. Rather risk mauling by a minor tour to an Try to assemble letters chained at the back of your mind. Jaden, Malik, Nathaniel, Tyrone. <clears throat> Coffin up black out your mouth. Trace discarded down drains of what was more than signature or label. Part of identity held proud that you would see purged. Permanent demolition of Jamal. Glenn. Marcus. Khalid. Jordan. Dante. Micah. Kieran. Wow, Shaniqua, thank you so much for sharing that poem. 
I, I mean, I love that feeling of just hearing a poem land like that and then actually feeling a bit like, you know, you take my breath away with it. And your delivery is so gorgeous as well. I think that, is such, a, that is such a powerful poem. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the process of writing it, how you came to write it, why you wrote it? Yeah, so it's all part of like a larger piece of work I've been working on that means the most to me, called Ghosted, which is all about young men, specifically young black men who are often ghosted by a system and society and the different problems of that. And this one, it started in an amazing workshop with Debris Stevenson that she was doing during lockdown called, um, right now. And we did this like one minute free write. And then I built on that and she was saying, um, use a poem with as many names as possible, based, um, inspired by a poem by Jay Bernard from Verge. And so I was just like, I want to use all these um, different guys' names and think about how often their names are forgotten. Other people don't want to say them or can't say them or these just young men are often just put in the background or it's like you're not saying their names until like, they've suddenly been killed by the police. Mm -hmm. I think it's just really important to remember these young men because most of those names are people that I actually know who I've worked with and they are such beautiful people with yeah sometimes troubled backgrounds or do do troubling things but they have these beautiful hearts that haven't always been nourished and they have so much to give to the world and it's just like say their names don't just forget their names or don't try and say their names or ignore these people like they are here and they deserve your care and your love and respect as well because they're not monsters they're human beings they're someone's son or brother or something like that Mm. thank you so much for that amazing exploration of your poem after the beautiful poem itself as well yeah I feel like you've carved out some really valuable space with that poem and it's breeding compassion I think um and that's why it's so powerful that's after. really important for me that's why I hope will happen through the laureateship is more of that and I hope to work with some amazing young men and get them sharing and get their stories in their own words because they have so many amazing stories to tell which I always love to hear, hear but I would love to hear one of your poems as well if possible. <gasps> okay sure thing okay so this is a poem called you know a market where the tulips are still three quid you know a market where the tulips are still three quid and you buy them to remind yourself that you can. They begin tight-lipped and upright, but their petals become loose, droop. Their stems will start to lean away from their own. You know the cat will cry at 2 a.m. Some nights you will sleep right through, others, your body will fling you upright as though your brother is dying again. You know what the wine does to your teeth. You know about leaving. You know you keep useless things in case you need to build a shrine. You know how to make gods of men whose toothbrushes sit caked on the counter. You know this and you let them weigh your avocado, rolling it around in their palm. Oh, that was beautiful. I just, I can really just like fall into your words. I just, this, you've got this amazing voice. Like I listened to that for ages. I'd love no, to know you. that. It sounds really interesting, actually. And even the, from the title, I was like, I really want to hear this poem because it sounds really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I like a long title. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I'm right. I'm. I guess it it started with the um, this idea of kind of like maybe sort of like self-care and being like I'm going to buy myself flowers because I can trying to feel it in charge of yourself but then it became this kind of list poem about all the things you know um you know that the fly you you buy the flowers but you know they're going to die and then perhaps you know other things but perhaps you do things that aren't necessarily that good for you sometimes so I guess it's kind of about that but also I write a lot about kind of loss and grief and um and how that kind of sits with you and um how you live your life with that um and that sort of always finds a way to kind of creep into my poems um and I've, you know I'm not mad at that because I'm you know everyone lives through that and everyone was going to have to face that in some way and mm -hmm. so it keeps creeping into my poems I think because it needs to maybe 
And um, for me, poetry is kind of about finding a language to talk about um, the, the good things in life, the joy as well, but also the challenges and the unspeakable, unsayable things. And, um, and so a lot of the time my poem is, my poems are trying to kind of like figure out how to express those things, you know? I think that's really important. And I think a lot of people resonate with that and may come to poetry for those things, but it's what can they find that will say that will help them and realize they're not by themselves. So I think that's really amazing. And you do it in a beautiful way where it's not so heavy or like you're reading it and you're just like, you're putting yourself in some maybe the more depressive state. It's a really beautiful way of looking at it. Mm. And you can resonate with that and look at that. So I think that's really, really wonderful. Mm. Really wonderful. Well, Tom from Spread the Word is telling me that we've been chatting for over 20 minutes, um, which has gone by so quickly. It's been so nice talking to you about all of the things that you're excited to do and your relationship with poetry. And I feel, I feel like we share the same sentiment of how kind of vital it is and how we want to make it um, a thing that more people can enjoy. Um, so thank you so much for talking to me. It's been thank really you amazing. So much. It's wonderful to see you and I'm looking forward to seeing all that you do. I know you're going to do some amazing, beautiful things and I can't wait to see your projects and what comes out of working with young people and hopefully it's all end soon so we can actually do stuff in person. Yeah, hopefully before our year as laureates finish, we'll be actually... Yeah, have I have three. So <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so you're definitely, you're definitely going to get to do some face-to-face -face stuff, I hope. Um, but hopefully our paths will cross again one day. Um, because I would love that.